Good morning, ladies. I thought today we might be a little nostalgic and read about biodiversity. I found a great article here with some awesome colors and great discussion questions for the end that you can write about. So what is biodiversity? Mr. Toucan. Biodiversity or biological diversity means all the kind, different kinds of plants, animals, and other living things that live in an area. Scientists think about biodiversity in three ways. First, it is all the plants and animals living in an area. The second way scientists think about biodiversity is genetic diversity. Remember all of on our gallery walk, we had all of our different kinds. All living things have genes. Genes are responsible for different characteristics, like eye color and whether our hair is curly or straight. Genetic diversity in a species means that there are many different traits in individuals that the species can have. Genetic diversity is important to biodiversity. That's because more gen genetic diversity gives a species a greater chance of surviving. The third way scientists think about biodiversity is the number of different ecosystems in a region. An ecosystem is all the living and non-living things in an environment. An area with high biodiversity includes many different species and makes an ecosystem stronger. When the number of species decreases, it means the area is in danger. Some areas are more biodiverse than others. Tropical areas have more types of plants and animals than polar regions and deserts. The rise of conservation biology. Conservation biologists are scientists who study life on Earth. Their goal is to protect living things in their habitats. In the 1980s, they began thinking about biodiversity. At the time, plants and animals were going extinct at high rates because of animal actions. They were cutting down rainforests, polluting the air and waterways. Many species that lived within these environments died out. Edward O. Wilson is an American scientist. In 1988, he came out with an important book called Biodiversity. He said that biodiversity was important. The more species an ecosystem has, the more likely it can survive different threats. In 2011, scientists estimated that 8.7 million species lived on Earth. Of these, about 9 out of 10 species have not been discovered yet. Threats to Biodiversity the planet is experiencing a die-off, which is a mass extinction. About 65 million years ago, three-quarters of the species on Earth suddenly were extinct, including the dinosaurs. Scientists today think many species are quickly going extinct because of human actions. Plants and animals are disappearing at an alarming rate. It is happening at about 1,000 to 10,000 times faster than normal. There are five major reasons. The first is habitat destruction. When a habitat is destroyed, plants and animals are not able to survive. Humans cut down trees to clear land for houses and farming. Some of those areas have great biodiversity, like the Amazon rainforest. Much of the Amazon rainforest has been destroyed to make room for farming. Another reason for the loss of biodiversity is climate change. Climate change is the warming of the earth. Up to one in four land species could die out before 2050. Many species can only survive in certain temperatures. If the temperature in their habitat changes, they could die out. Climate change is also causing ocean levels to rise. Scientists predict that ocean water will cause flooding to lands along the coasts. The third reason for lower bi biodiversity is invasive species. This is one of the reasons, remember, why the uh, happy-faced spider in Hawaii died out. There are plants and animals that have been brought to an area on purpose or by accident. They have no natural predators, and they may be stronger than local species. In the 1800s, settlers brought many animals to Australia, like toads, camels, goats, water buffaloes, and pigs. Many native plants and animals were wiped out. Overexploitation is the fourth reason. This is when a resource is overused. For instance, the Maori people of New Zealand hunted so many moa, a large flightless bird that it died out. A type of eagle also became extinct because the moa was its main source of food. When one resource is used too much, an entire food chain can be hurt. Pollution is the fifth reason. Exhaust from automobiles is a kind of pollution. So are chemicals that factories dump into rivers. Even fertilizers, pesticides, and manures from farms can pollute soil and water. The Convention on Bio Biological Diversity. 
The Convention on Biological Diversity is an international treaty. It is an agreement between countries designed to conserve biodiversity. It calls on countries to make plans that protect ecosystems. The convention was opened for signature at the Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro in 1992. Since then, every nation in the world, except the United States, has signed and ratified it. It took effect in 1993. Conserving biodiversity by giving it economic value. Many conservationists, conservation biologists, excuse me, think the best way to preserve biology is to show that people can make money from it. Protecting ecosystems can help us meet our own needs. Water powers some electricity plants. A variety of plants and animals can give us more food to eat. Biodiversity can be vulnerable in other ways, too. One example is the opportunity to enjoy amazing places in nature. According to one study, the benefits of biodiversity are worth many trillions of dollars. In fact, preserving biodiversity is far less expensive than having to adjust to a less biodiverse world. You can help protect biodiversity by supporting conservation organizations. You can also learn about conservation and what your government is doing to maintain biodiversity. Finally, you can support companies that protect the environment. All right, ladies. So again, once you do your reread, go over to your activities where you can take your quiz and do your writing. So I want to take a look here at our writing prompt for today. So and explain, it says, explain how you would explain the scientific concept or process to someone who has never heard of it before. So how would you explain biodiversity? Use details from the article to explain the concept or process. Okay, so also, ladies, you can also do the science write in quiz. This is a great article where it says, this article shares five threats to biodiversity, habitat destruction, climate change, invasive species, overexploitation of resources, and pollution. Which of these is a threat to life in your area? What animals and plants does it threaten? Okay, so again, you have your quiz, and then you have two writing prompts for both um, kind of science and ELA. So again, make sure you're getting that done. We are in News ELA under the Assignments tab, and you'll find What is Biodiversity, and you'll be able to do your quiz. Good luck. Our planet's diverse, thriving ecosystems may seem like permanent fixtures, but they're actually vulnerable to collapse. Jungles can become deserts, and reefs can become lifeless rocks, even without cataclysmic events like volcanoes and asteroids. What makes one ecosystem strong and another weak in the face of change? The answer, to a large extent, is biodiversity. Biodiversity is built out of three intertwined features, ecosystem diversity, species diversity, and genetic diversity. The more intertwining there is between these features, the denser and more resilient the weave becomes. Take the Amazon rainforest, one of the most biodiverse regions on Earth due to its complex ecosystems, huge mix of species, and the genetic variety within those species. Here are tangled liana vines, which crawl up from the forest floor to the canopy, intertwining with treetops and growing thick wooded stems that support these towering trees. Helped along by the vines, trees provide the seeds, fruits, and leaves to herbivores such as the tapir and the agouti, which disperse their seeds throughout the forest so they can grow. Leftovers are consumed by the millions of insects that decompose and recycle nutrients to create rich soil. The rainforest is a huge system filled with many smaller systems like this, each packed with interconnected species. Every link provides stability to the next, strengthening biodiversity's weave. That weave is further reinforced by the genetic diversity within individual species, which allows them to cope with changes. Species that lack genetic diversity due to isolation or low population numbers are much more vulnerable to fluctuations caused by climate change, disease, or habitat fragmentation. Whenever a species disappears because of its weakened gene pool, a knot is untied and parts of the net disintegrate. So, what if we were to remove one species from the rainforest? Would the system fall apart? Probably not. The volume of species, their genetic diversity, and the complexity of the ecosystems form such rich biodiversity in this forest that one species gap in the weave won't cause it to unravel. The forest can stay resilient and recover from change. 
But that's not true in every case. In some environments, taking away just one important component can undermine the entire system. Take coral reefs, for instance. Many organisms in a reef are dependent on the coral. It provides key microhabitats, shelter, and breeding grounds for thousands of species of fish, crustaceans, and mollusks. Corals also form interdependent relationships with fungi and bacteria. The coral itself is a loom that allows the tangled net of biodiversity to be woven. That makes coral a keystone organism, one that many others depend on for their survival. So what happens when destructive fishing practices, pollution, and ocean acidification weaken coral or even kill it altogether? Exactly what you might think. The loss of this keystone species leaves its dependence at a loss too, threatening the entire fabric of the reef. Ecosystem, species, and genetic diversity together form the complex tangled weave of biodiversity that is vital for the survival of organisms on Earth. We humans are woven into this biodiversity too. When just a few strands are lost, our own well-being is threatened. Cut too many links and we risk unraveling it all. What the future brings is unpredictable, but biodiversity can give us an insurance policy, Earth's own safety net, to safeguard our survival.